Welcome to the Church of Thomas. Exaggeration, 9-18-09. This sermon is based on the story of the boy who cried wolf. Now those people that haven't heard the story lately, I'll give you a little synopsis. There was a little boy, and he was in charge of the herds. He went out, he slept with them, he kept them from harm, went and pulled them out of rocks when they got their legs stuck, uh, got their heads out from fences, and shooed off any wild animals that came towards the animals. Um, he did a pretty good job, but he was lonely. He was bored, and he also had a little bit of a spark in him that wanted to do mischief. Now, all, all kids have a little spark of mischief, so I can sort of understand the first time that he did this. He decided to test the village who all of the herd belonged as food resource for this village. He decided to test this village to see how fast he could get help. So he yelled at the top of his lungs, wolf. Now that was a cue for the whole village to pour out and grab pitchforks and uh, clubs and everything else to go rescue the sheep that were being attacked by a pack of wolves. It, uh, it meant the difference between starvation and uh, having a full belly all winter long. And they got up there, and there weren't any wolves. And the boy was sitting there picking his teeth. And they said, well, where's the wolves? Well, I just thought I'd find out how fast it would take y'all to get up here. And they went, oh, jeez, this is ridiculous, and went back to the village. But then... The other part kicked in, and whatever it is that made him do this was really, really a bad idea. But maybe he was just slow on the uptake. He decided to test them again. So he waited a couple of days, and he yelled, Wolf! Before you know it, all the pitchforks and clubs and everything else were out of their racks, and, and all the people were pouring up the hill to protect the sheep. They got up there, no wolves. So they went back down, but this time they were angry. And they figured that he was just a liar from the word go. And there wasn't anything that he said that they would ever believe again. You know, obviously he just didn't understand. And they told him so, and then they left. Well, this was an especially dense young fellow, and so a couple of weeks passed, he decided he was bored again. He hadn't had any excitement in a couple of weeks, and he figured, hey, I really liked all those village folks coming at my beck and call, so I'm going to cry wolf again. So he did. No one came. But right after he said wolf, sure enough, there was a pack of wolves just edging up on the edge of his herd. And so he started calling Wolf every three or four seconds, just running around the herd trying to beat the wolves off, yelling at the top of his lungs, Wolf, Wolf. Nobody came. The wolves wound up knocking him down and hurting him and carrying off a couple of the sheep. The herd dispersed and most of them made it. They weren't uh, all killed. Uh, but the three or four that got drug off uh, were never seen again. The villagers were expecting him to come down for his lunch packs, you know, to feed himself while he was up on the hill, and they didn't see him for a couple of days. So somebody said, oh, he's, he's probably sleeping and, and just not paying attention again. I'll go check on him. They went up there and they found him bled to death. The wound that was in his leg had opened an artery and he bled out. And he finally had quit yelling wolf, but it was too late. I think the point here is that when you exaggerate, when you lie, and exaggeration is lying, then at some point people quit believing you. An example of this is something that can have far-reaching consequences. It's the news coverage. Got two bones to pick with the news people. One of them is 
that when Hurricane Ike hit Galveston, I was there. I knew what was happening. Uh, basically, the news people poured in. They all went down to the West End, photographed aerial shots, all sorts of stuff. And the only thing that they made photographs of was stuff that was debris, damage, or total decimation. The buildings that were still standing, the people who were still in the buildings, none of them were photographed. This was a way of exaggerating the news, to make it big, big story. It was already a huge story. They didn't have to exaggerate. But as a result, I had numerous people think I had to be dead. They looked at the West End coverage, which was all at sea level, by the way, and there were no buildings left. Well, I was on a seawall, but they didn't do any pictures of the seawall except for the pile of debris right there on the coast. It was a huge disservice to this area. It probably also discouraged people from coming back, uh, which is a shame. But the coverage never modified it la later. They always wanted the sensational, the death and destruction. Not a single life was lost on the seawall. But they never covered that. It wasn't news. Then, just recently, horrible floods in Minnesota. Really bad. And I can understand why the coverage needed to be there. <clears throat> but the day before the flooding started, no water had gone through their sandbag dike. And there were news people there, weather people, and they didn't have anything to photograph. So of course they made something to photograph. What they did is they got down basically on knees and photographed puddles making them look like they were knee deep or higher and explaining where the water would be in images where you couldn't see what was going on. And it, it was a horrible disservice. Instead of showing after the flooding had started, they showed puddles. If there was somebody who was in their home that saw them and knew the landmarks and went, uh, they're on their knees, I know what that tree looks like, they might not have left. There may have been people who stayed because when they saw that news coverage, they knew it was a lie. You can lose lives like the boy who cried wolf when you exaggerate. The news media needs to be a truth media rather than a sensation media. Yellow journalism needs to go away. It needs to be verifiable. It needs to be truthful coverage or people will quit believing you. A lie is a lie, no matter how it comes about. God bless the whole world, no exceptions. In July.